ocean, over the clouds, and around the world. Here comes the wild side of wildlife. The Animal Show! And now, let's have a wild welcome for your furry friends. Stinky and Shake! Now it's the Animal Show! All you little animals out there. Hi, Stinky. And I'm Jake. And Hello, today... cousin Jakey. Hi, hey, Stinky buddy. Mickey. Hey, Jake, what's with all the flowers? Well, we're putting out flowers because today's guests are two animals that need flowers to survive Ooh. the honey bee mm. and the honey possum. Yeah. 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 Well, what's hey. wrong with Armstrong there? Well, well, whenever he's around flowers, he <laughs> sneezes. Boy, it's going to be a long day for him. <laughs> Uh, and for us. <laughs> and that... I got it. And now it's time for That's Amazing! Yeah. Today we answer the age-old question. How many honeybees does it take to make a one-pound jar of honey? You know, I've always wondered about that. Here are the bees. Worker bees are the only bees that can turn the nectar from flowers into honey. No magic flowers. Uh oh. In a healthy beehive, there are about 80,000 worker bees, and they can make 40 to 100 pounds of honey a year. Dude, that's a lot of honey. It takes 800 worker bees one year to make a one pound jar of honey. Busy buzzing honey bees. Oh, another animal that makes me say, hey, <laughs> ah, two! And will make you say, <gasps> That's amazing! Jake, Jake, who are those uh, scary looking animals over there? <laughs> oh, well, those scary animals are the judges for the best show hosted by animals, especially skunks and polar bears award. I sure hope we win. Well, what happens if we don't? Oh, well, well let's see. Uh, it says here, uh, if you do not win, the, the judges, judges can eat, eat you for dinner. dinner. <gasps> Dinner? Dinner? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Jake. We'll do a great show. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, and now, before anything else goes wrong, <laughs> let's meet our first guest, a very busy bee. In fact, he's so busy, he's reporting from the field. What field? Oh, you know, that field full of flowers way far over across mm. the meadow. Mm. And here he is by Satellite Link. Satellite Link? Welcome, Barry, the honeybee. Jake. Hi. Welcome to the show, Barry. Oh, I wish I could be there with you, but we honeybees are busy, busy, busy. Well, we don't want to keep you, but but we do want to know all about the life of honeybees. Yeah. I'd be happy to help. Oh, hey, worker bee, roll that clip. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. here's our swarm. A swarm is what we call a group of bees, like these honeybees gathering in the woods. Well, now, what are they doing? They're flying towards their hive. Oh, that's the place where we honeybees live. Wow, that's a lot of bees. Oh, no, that's just a few, Stinky. As many as 80,000 bees can live in a single hive. Why so many? Well, we have to live in large groups. You see, honeybees can't survive without everyone living and working together. What kind of work do you mean? Work like this bee is doing. That's work? <laughs> Looks like she's just sniffing the flowers. No, not at all, Stinky. This bee is collecting nectar and pollen. Who are nectar and pollen? <laughs> no, nectar and pollen are substances produced by flowers. We collect them and, and bring them back to feed all the bees in our hive. You eat stuff from flowers? Sure. The pollen gives us protein and fat, and the nectar gives us sugar and energy. Well, isn't it true that you make honey from nectar? That's right. Way to impress the judges, Jake. <laughs> we store up lots and lots of honey. It's a source of food for us when winter comes and no flowers are in bloom. Plus, when a honeybee is at work, she carries pollen from one flower to another. That's called pollination. Correct. <laughs> Way to go, Jake. The judges are smiling. Pollination is what helps to make more flowers. So you see, we have flowers, and flowers give us food to eat. I understand what the worker bees do, but I hear you also have a queen bee who lays 1,500 eggs every day. Well, no wonder it's so crowded in your hive. Yeah. Oh, we need that many eggs. You see, the average honeybee only lives four to six weeks, and it's a busy, busy time. Uh, we have to fly as fast as we can. That doesn't look so fast. No, that's because these pictures are in slow motion. Oh. That bee is really beating its wings several hundred times a minute. Now, is it your wings that cause that buzzing sound a bee makes? That's right. Well, way to go, Jake. Make us a winner and we won't be dinner. Yeah. 
Yeah, beating our wings that fast also lets us fly in every direction. Up and down and backwards and forwards. That must help when you're going from flower to flower. It certainly does. We can move very quickly from one plant to the next, and we can get in and out of virtually any flower. Now, how exactly do bees get the pollen and nectar from the flowers? On our hind legs, we have special hairs that collect the pollen. You can see them right there. Hey, why is that bee shaking his backside at us? Or she's just trying to get the extra pollen off her wings and legs. Well, now, why does she do that? Well, the pollen is very sticky. She has to clean it off so she'll be light enough to fly back home. Hmm, well, let's talk about domestic honeybees. I'd be happy to. I got some pictures right here. Domestic honeybees are mostly found in hives like this one. Wow, that's a nice hive. Did they build it themselves? <laughs> no, stinky silly. <laughs> that hive was built by humans. Ooh, do the bees have to pay rent? Well, yes, in a way they do. You see, humans build those hives to attract honeybees. Then the humans take some of our honey and beeswax for themselves. Humans have been doing that for hundreds of years, right? That's right. Oh, what happened to that bee? Oh dear, she must have been blown into that water by a strong wind. We bees are not very good swimmers. Well, I hope she sees that frog staring at her. Oh, she'll be all right. Frogs and most other animals know that our stingers hurt, and that means honeybees are not a very tasty meal. Once the bee gets out of the water, oh, she dries herself off and she's ready to get back to work again. Well, Barry, we'll let you get back to work, too. Oh, I better had. <laughs> After all, we honeybees only have four to six weeks to live. Oh. Bye. Bye. Four to six weeks? That may be a lot longer than we have. <laughs> oh, relax, Stinky. I've got something those judges are going to love. Oh, you must mean it's time for... <gasps> Baby, Baby talk. talk. <laughs> Hello, I'm a bee lover. No, you won't see me there. Those are all eggs. And those are all grown-up worker bees taking care of us. You'll see me in a second. Right next to that egg there I am. Pretty beautiful lover, don't you think? We love it, have a great life. The worker bees fuss over us all the time. They feed us and make sure our nursery stays at the right temperature. If it's too cool, they all gather together to make it warmer. And if it's too warm, they beat their wings to fan on us. They also repair and wax the chambers where we live while we're growing up. But, oh, you know the best thing about being a lava? It's all the delicious pollen you get to eat. Baby talk was a great idea, Jake. I think the judges are smiling. Well, maybe smiling is too strong a word. Well, here's something that'll sweeten them up. Honey! <laughs> Reporter, getting you answers to today's tough questions. Let's see if one of these animals knows the answer. Oh, sir, sir. Oh, no, I, I can't talk right now. I'm judging a show. It'll just take a moment. Can you tell me which bee makes the most honey? The mining bee, the leaf cutter bee, the honey bee, or the bumblebee? Your answer? Trapdoor. Did you say trapdoor? <laughs> yeah, we judges love it when you do that thing with the trapdoor. The answer. The bee that makes the most honey is the honeybee. Let's take a look at how they do it. Honey 
is made from nectar, which the bees collect from flowers and deposit in these chambers. That bee dancing around there has found some flowers, and her movements are telling the other bees where the flowers are located. These worker bees are sealing the cells where the honey is stored. All the workers in the hive help to store the winter supplies of honey. This human is now scraping off the wax covering. Mm -hmm. Honey! Humans only take honey that the bees don't need. It all goes into a big vat, and from there it goes into jars, and then onto a spoon, and into a mouth. Delicious! This is Rhonda Rat reporting on honey. Back to you, Stinky and Jake. And now it's time to bring out our second guest, all the way from Western Australia. Australia! Priscilla, the honey possum. Well, well, look at all these flowers. Looks like I've got a few days' worth of eating here. Better to get this chat over so I can get started. No. Hi, Stinky. Hi, Jake. Oh, uh, uh, welcome, Priscilla. <laughs> Gosh, Priscilla, you're teensy. Yeah. Thanks, Stinky. Tiny is the only way to be when you're a honey possum. Let me show you what I mean. Oh, oh you brought a little clip? We have to be tiny to be able to climb on all kinds of flowers and plants, like this honey possum is doing. Well, why is he climbing up there? That's where our food is. Honey possums eat nectar and pollen, just like honey bees. But you can't fly like honey bees. But we're still perfect for the job. We've got a long, slender snout that's just right for sticking into flowers. And we've got strong little paws that are great for holding onto the stems and leaves. Well, and you have a prehensile tail, right? That's right, Jake. Well, that's always good, whatever it is. Prehensile just means we can use our tail like a paw to grab onto stems. It's like having an extra hand. Hmm, well, how do you get the pollen and nectar out of flowers? Well, we stick our snout into the plant, then use our long bristled tongue to gather up the pollen. Priscilla, I want to know more about how a honey possum spends the day. Oh, that's simple. A honey possum is either eating or sleeping. Hey, that's where I like to spend my day, too. As you can see, when we're up and awake, we're very active. We eat three times a day, in the early morning, in the late afternoon, and then again around midnight. Now, how many flowers will you go to? Usually about a dozen for each feeding. Gee, for all that feeding, you don't bend the stems very much. Well, that's because a honey possum usually only weighs just under an ounce. Oh. Oh, here comes another honey possum. Now, do you live in groups like the honey bees? Just the opposite. We are very solitary animals and keep to ourselves. These honey possums are together only because there aren't enough plants in the area. Except during breeding season, we try to stay out of each other's way. Uh -huh. Now, are you really related to the possum? We look like possums, and they are distant cousins of ours. But we're a one-of-a-kind animal, a species all to ourselves. Cool. Hey, yum, yum. Eat them up. Boy, that pollen must be pretty good stuff the way this honey possum is eating. Oh, it sure is. It's the most delicious thing in the world. Now, Priscilla, I understand you're a marsupial. Jake, that is no way to talk to a lady. I I'm sorry. I apologize for Jake. Uh, he didn't mean it, judges. Stinky, relax. I am a marsupial. <sighs> You are? Yes, Stinky. A marsupial is just a mammal that has a pouch where we keep our young when they're babies. Oh, like a kangaroo. Or a wombat or a bandicoot or a... Show off. Sorry. Of course, baby honey possums soon get too big for the pouch. Before long, they climb on our backs for a free ride. Now, is that how they learn how to feed for themselves like this little fella? Right, but the first thing they learn is to lick the extra nectar off their mother's nose, like these two are doing. Ah, oh, as you can see, that kind of active life will wear anybody out. Ah, oh, she's sleeping. When honey possums sleep, it's a special kind of sleep called torpor. Oh, that's like hibernating, right? Right, but only for a few hours. Our heartbeat slows, our body temperature gets lower, and we're able to save a lot of energy. We'll be rested and ready to go when it's time to find more food. Well, uh, before you do that, could you take the time to sing a song? I'd love to. Oh, good. I'm sure they'll like this. Here's Priscilla singing Power from the Flower.
I just need my honey You can keep your gleaming ivory tower I'm a honey possum I'm in love with blossom And I get power from the flower In this age of money I just need my honey You can keep your gleaming ivory tower I'm a honey possum I'm in love with blossom And I get power from the flower And now it's time for today's... Animal Awards! Hey, I think that cleared my sinuses. Great! Today we find out which of these is the smallest land mammal. Is it the pygmy shrew? Or the koala? The red kangaroo? Or is it the sugar glider? And the winner is... Shrew, which weighs less than half an ounce and is under two inches long. Mmm, the uncommonly small pygmy shrew. Winner of today's Animal Award. It's time for a story. Uh, do the judges like stories? Well, might as well give it a try. Okay. Uh, once, upon once upon a time, time, there was a queen bee named Beatrix who decided it was high time she started her own hive. So she built a little nest laid some eggs, and before long, Beatrix had some worker bees to help her. But they needed a drone. Drones were the only bees who could help the queen make more eggs. Suddenly, they heard a voice. Let me out! It was a drone bee named Vincent trying to hatch. I'm coming, I'm coming, cried one of the workers, and she helped Vincent out of his chamber. When Vincent was all hatched, he dried his wings, had a little rest, and then, he did some exercises. Then Benson, Beatrix, and the worker bees started their own hive and buzzed happily ever, ever after. after. The, the end. end. Mm. Stinky, did the judges like the story? Well, at least they haven't eaten us yet. Mm. Once again, it's Habitat Time. Uh, I'm strong. Uh, Are you ready to go? Yeah. I'll do anything to get away from all these flowers. Anything? Yeah. You mean like going to these flowers? I don't believe this. Who could live in all these flowers? Well, uh. oh, that roof is hummingbird for one. Uh. Oh, uh, is that a... Uh, uh, no, Armstrong, it's a bird in. Uh, how can it live in all these flowers? Lots of birds feed on flowers, and the ones that do usually have long, pointed beaks to get at the nectar, like this one, see? Yeah. Oh, there's the hummingbird again. Yeah. Of course, birds aren't the only animals which need flowers. Butterflies do, too. Really? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm a... Oh, hey, what is that? It's a big grasshopper. Huh. Hey, I don't blame that bee for flying away. That grasshopper looks me. <laughs> uh, hey, now that's not a bird, or a bee, or a grasshopper. Eh? So what's it doing here? It's an apple-headed bat. <laughs> like the birds and bees, it feeds on the flower's nectar. It doesn't have a long beak, but it does have a long tongue. Look. Let's see. Hey, wait a minute. We're not in the middle of that garden anymore. We're in a desert. Whoa, hey, I can breathe again. Oh, that's good, Armstrong. Yeah. You know, there are animals like this desert tortoise who don't live in gardens but do eat flowers and other vegetation. Huh. Because it's so dry in the desert, this tortoise must eat as much plant material as it can find if it's going to survive. Hey, you know, I feel much better. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> oh, yeah, and the hoatzin is another animal which relies on flowering plants for food. Good-looking bird. Too bad about the flower. <laughs> From the habitat time, it's Bunny Bear... And I'm Strong the Chicken Hawk. Just back for some flowers. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. Over to you, Rod. Right there. Oh. Oh. Once again, I'm Rhonda Rat, rodent reporter, getting you answers to today's tough questions. Let's see if one of these animals knows the answer. Sir. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, can you answer this question? Yeah. Which of these is not a true marsupial? The sugar glider, the koala, the red kangaroo, or the marsupial frog? Your answer? I want the trap door, too. You asked for oh, it. Please. Trap door! Ah! You got it. And now, the answer. The marsupial frog is not a true marsupial. It may have a pouch like marsupials, but true marsupials are mammals. And this frog is, of course, an amphibian. This is Rhonda Rat reporting on marsupial frogs. Now back to you, Stinky and Jake. Thanks, Rhonda. Well, that's all we have time for today. Jake, 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 did we win? Oh, uh, just a minute, Stinky. First, I want to thank today's guest, Barry the Honey Bee and Priscilla the Honey Possum. Jake, I cannot stand the suspense. Did we win? Are we the best animal show hosted by animals, especially skunks and polar bears? We sure are! I can't it, it turns out that the judges are big fans of honey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and here's Bunny with our prize. Here you go. We won more flowers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the worst part is, I think the thief may make me sneeze. Me, sneeze. me too. Me too. <laughs> 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 Oh. Yeah, and CDs don't bother me at all. Look. Uh. See? Huh? Ah. Ah. Whoa. Well, uh, remember to keep on seeing the world uh, through the eyes of animals. Are you okay, Armstrong? Hey, never better. There's no flowers up here. <laughs> <laughs> Choo! 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 Choo!